This video is about how to make purple in watercolour. We all know that red and blue make purple, but it's important to understand which red and which blue, and that way we're going to work out what your purple will look like. So I'm going to start off with the simplest version of how to make purple, and it is fail-proof. Then I'm going to get into more complex versions of how to make purple. This is Winsor & Newton permanent rose. You can never go wrong with using permanent rose and you can see it over here on my palette. It lives permanently in the spot of red. I use it in place of red and that's because it makes magnificent purples and oranges. This is thalo blue and it is also a pure blue so I'm going to put it here and again, this is where my phthalo blue lives permanently in the blue spot on this uh, colour wheel. It's a Quilla palette. Okay, so with those two colours, I cannot go wrong. Here's some um, phthalo blue. Dump that brush. Here's some um, permanent rose. And here's permanent rose. It is the prettiest colour. And here's my phthalo blue. And I'm going to bring it over and then bring this one over to cover it. And in the middle here, back and forth, I'm going to get this magnificent purple. So you can see as my brush picks up more blue, then I get more bluey purple. And as it picks up more pink, I will get a more pinky purple. So I'm going to wash that brush and grab more clean pink, rub it round so I don't put any uh, lumps on my page. And here comes the permanent rose to mix in. So in this middle bit here, I'm going to get this, oh, I'm going to take it all the way, bring it back. And there you have this incredibly beautiful array of pinky purple right up to a bluey purple. So that's a really straightforward one, permanent rose and phthalo blue. You cannot lose with those beautiful colours. Let's do a real quick landscape shape. Water into a rectangle and let's see the colours mix on their own. Put in a bit of pink. I love how that moves around. I just never tire of that alchemy. Let's put the blue into the pink. This is another way of mixing it, where you allow the colours to mix themselves. Up here, I'm kind of overworking it by going back and forth, back and forth. But if I do it this way, just bringing those colours into the others, just slowly pushing them backwards and forwards, I start to get the three colours being shown. So you can see some of the pink in there, you can see some of the blue, but you can also see where it is mixing. And again, you could go in and add more blue, add more pink, and you'll get a different um, variation. Let's do that one more time, but this time we're going to put down a quick wash of pink, this permanent rose. I'm calling it pink because, boy, it is pink. and just real quick and then let's see what happens if we layer the blue over the top. You do get a version of purple but it is just dominating. So let's go back to the pink and drag the pink over and now I'm starting to move into purple. But you can see that it is dominantly blue. It's not phthalo blue anymore, it's actually a really beautiful blue purple, but because there's more blue and less pink, you get that beautiful effect. Okay, get rid of these brushes, just wash them off so that I can start again. Let's change out permanent rose. We'll keep the phthalo blue. Throughout the video I'm going to keep the phthalo blue. I think that will make it easier to understand the effect that the pink is having. So set that one aside. My next pink is Rose Matter. This is a Holbein colour. It does not live permanently on my palette. It's a beautiful red, red, red pink. It's, it's, well, it's a crimson. That's what it is. Okay, I've got some red going there. I'm just going to get a little more water, a little more blue. I like to um, turn it round and round, rub the paint round and round on my palette to ensure no lumps. 
Okay, let's try this one here. This is rose matter. So actually it could be a, a little more watery. It will uh, mix it better. Rose matter. And here I'm going to add a touch of water that to the phthalo blue as well. Let's bring the phthalo blue over. Yeah, see that was really thick. Thick and come over and hit the red and keep going. Oh, the purple that it instantly made is completely different. It's quite a greyish purple. Uh, and that's because that is far more red. Let's just play with that for a second longer and bring the red over and see what happens if we do that. Again, it's a really deep, rich purple, but it's not a pretty purple. Pink, pretty purple. And this red, which is rose matter, is actually making an incredibly dark, um, deep color. Let's do, I'm gonna get a slightly bigger brush. Ooh. That's faster. Nice rectangle. If you have trouble seeing where your water is, just put your head on the side of your paper and instantly you'll be able to see where your water is. Now I'll do the same order. Bring the pink, the rose matter down and let's put the, you don't need very much phthalo into that at all. I'm gonna come back in to my permanent rose and I'm going to try and cancel those blues to see if I can get it to mix something on the page. And I love that system. You can now see the rose matter, you can see the permanent blue, but you can also see where they're mixing together. And the little final one, I'm going to do a lovely wet wash in my rose matter more water in order to do a little wet wash. I want to be fast because boy is it warm here today. It is, uh, summer has just begun and it's been insane already. We're reaching incredible heights. Again, you can see that blue's just completely dominating. Thalo blue is incredibly intense. I'm coming back in with the rose matter to try and get the purple happening again. And it's really, really dark. I'd have to go over and over with more rose matter to bring it back to more of a purple side, but it is a beautifully intense, um, uh, deep kind of dark purple. It'd probably be absolutely beautiful in a sky. Okay, final one. Let's do a third one. I've got quinacridone magenta. That is fantastic. I use that all the time. I've also got quinacridone rose. Now, I could do quinacridone rose, but you'll find that it's incredibly similar to permanent rose, so not going to be much different. I've also got opera, quinacridone opera. This pink is just insanely magnificent. It's like lolly pink and the intensity is um, just incredible. I, uh, it doesn't live permanently on my palette so I'm going to just squeeze some out. Oh, oh well I thought I was going to squeeze some. Ah, oh, it's gone all hard. I think just encourage it out. Ugh. Will there be enough? I'm going to have to get my pliers. This might be the last of my permanent, uh, my opera, quinacridone opera. I um, did a lot of work with Holbein and uh, that's how I ended up exploring a lot of their colors. I won um, a competition that they ran years ago and so um, I ended up using a lot of them and had a really great relationship with them um, for years. It was wonderful. All right, here is Quinacridone Opera. Look how sticky it is, because I had to squeeze it out. It's lost some of its moisture content, gone a little bit sticky and hard. So definitely worth squeezing out and massaging first. So there's a lovely lumpy bit just there and I'm getting, in incredibly beautiful pink over here. Okay, let's see if I've got enough water and I'm gonna do this one. <laughs> I'm running out of space, aren't I? So let's do it uh, this way. Pink up here. This is opera pink. 
put the brush down carefully because I don't want to mix it with the other colors for now. And here's phthalo blue, touch of water because it's just drying up on my palette. Phthalo blue, let's touch into the pink. And I need to bring that pink. Oh, they're not mixing, which is fascinating. All right. Oh, now the blue is completely dominating. And it is, oh, absolutely magnificent. I need to just pull out so you can see that. Right, that's better. That purple is quite different to this purple and it is incredibly beautiful. Um, but I think it's just so hot in here. This is drying at this insane rate. So I'm gonna skip straight down to the fun part which is wet in wet, put down some water with my mop brush. I'm gonna do it in the same way, even though I can see that you don't use much blue at all, but let's do it in the same way. Put it through. I don't think that was the same way, but I don't think it matters either. That's better, I've got the viscosity going there, matched the wetness is what I mean. All right, let's drag the pink through again. And then I get pops of pink, pops of phthalo, and then the most beautiful purple that uh, you could imagine. So it looks, um, this permanent rose in comparison to opera is starting to look really red. And the uh, opera remains incredibly pink, but what a magnificent purple we've got down there. The final little test I've got space for, have I? <laughs> Uh, the opera, go over it with the phthalo blue and as with the others come back in with pink on top. They are mixing like an absolute dream and um, it's just the most beautiful pink that uh, the most beautiful purple that you could imagine. So if you um, have a range of reds, it's worth swatching them out to work out uh, which purple you love, what purpose your purple is. Are you painting flowers? Are you painting uh, clouds? That kind of thing, <coughs> excuse me. So now that I've got these beautiful colors on my palette, I'm just gonna wash that off because it had a stack of blue in it. Get that pink going. And I think it's time to use up that paint. I've got this magnificent book, so I'm gonna give you a little bit of info from The Secret Lives of Color about purple. The belief that purple is special and signifies power is surprisingly widespread. Now it is seen as a secondary color sandwiched in artists' color wheels between the primaries red and blue. Linguistically too, it has often been subordinate to large color categories, red, blue, or even black. Nor is purple per se part of the visible color spectrum, although violet, the very shortest spectral wavelength humans can see, is. The story of purple is bookended by two great dyes. The first of these, Tyrion, a symbol of the wealthy and elite, helped to establish the link with the divine. The second, Mauve, a man-made chemical wonder, ushered in the democratization of color in the 19th century. The precise shade of the ancient world's wonder dye remains something of a mystery. In fact, purple itself was somewhat was a somewhat fluid term. The ancient Greek and Latin words for color, porphyra and purpura, respectively, were also used to refer to deep crimson shades like the color of blood. Ulpian, a third century Roman jurist, defined purpura as anything red other than things dyed with cocos or carmine dyes. Pliny the Ender wrote that the best Tyrian cloth was tinged with black. Well, that bit didn't help at the end. Anyway, this book goes through a history of Tyrian purple, orchil, magenta, and on the edge of each page is a little bit of the um, colour to which they uh, refer. I reckon heliotrope is what I made at the end there with uh, phthalo blue and quinacridone opera, or just uh, opera. I think it was as pretty as heliotrope and I think I've improved my painting. What do you think, guys? Is it a little better? Ugh, I don't know. I'll decide that uh, tomorrow.
Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you learnt a little bit about purple today and how to mix uh, purples that you love. And I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me.